So you need a new lawnmower and you can't decide between a Honda or a Toro Super Recycler. This Honda HRX 217 VKA belongs to my neighbor. The Toro 21564 Super Recycler belongs to me. Both were purchased earlier this lawn season and have been used about a half a dozen times each. Both are excellent choices and different in their own ways. Let's compare the two to see which one comes out on top. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. Let's begin here by looking at where each of these lawnmowers are made. The Toro is made in Mexico. The Honda is made here in the US. Honda takes a big win right out of the gate for being made here domestically. Second on the list, we're looking at the overall weight of each unit. Toro steps on the scale at 90 pounds. The Honda comes in just one pound less at 89 pounds. Not much of a difference here, but if you're looking for a lighter mower to push around your yard, Honda takes the win. Next on the list is the deck. The Super Recycler stands firmly with an aluminum deck that it's been riding on for decades. Honda's Nexite deck is a durable plastic though. This is a tough one, but if we put the two in a fist fight, my money's on aluminum or aluminum for our friends across the pond. Not saying the Honda deck can't hold up, but I have seen these aluminum decks last for decades. Case in point, this 20 year old Toro commercial mower hiding in the corner of my garage. The Toro Super Recycler decks were designed with plenty of room for clippings to be mulched up. And from what many subscribers here on the channel have mentioned, the Honda deck has many grooves and crevices for grass clippings to get caught up. Toro gets its first win here. Engine quality. If you know Honda, you know they last and last. This is their GCV 200 engine. Many subscribers here on the channel love these engines. They run great and last a long time on very little maintenance. Only issues I've seen in the past on these engines is with their auto choke actuators. $10 part, 10 minute fix, Super easy to do. Toro, on the other hand, has been kicking around these Briggs and Stratton engines that struggle to run at times. This 190cc engine has been reported to sputter quite a bit, and there's quite a few YouTube videos out there on it. No issues to report on mine. Good boy. These Briggs and Stratton engines do have a lot of plastic components on them nowadays, including their carburetor. Come on, Toro, you can do better than that. And let's not forget that Toro has had Honda engines on their mowers in the past. Honda wins this round. No question about it. And to help this video get a win with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button down below? Thank you very much. Next topic, which is easier to start? Both of these mowers will start in one to two pulls, but the Toro comes with an electric starter right out of the box. If you want to get the electric start on the Honda, this will cost you a little extra to get it on the next model up. Another win for Toro. While we're on the topic of engines, easier oil change. Who's got it? Honda, all the way. Tip and pour it right out, super simple. For the Toro, you can put it in the stow position, but oil dripping out will get onto the engine cover. You can get creative to avoid this issue, but right out of the box, this is messy, messy, messy. Honda, another win. Gas tanks are exactly the same size at 0.24 gallons each. Looks like a tie there. Now here's something small, but I think it's valuable information. How easy are they to fill up with gas? Toro seems to have a taller pipe on the top, but Honda has a wider mouth, which makes it easier to pour into. Honda for another win, another one. Air filter assemblies. I do like the style here on the Toro. It's not coming off while you use the mower. The Honda covers though, the plastic tabs on top fail over time, come loose, and eventually the cover falls right off. My dad's fell off, went underneath the mower and got all chopped up. Many subscribers have mentioned these coming off. Toro strikes back. Let's turn our attention to the wheels. Both wheels have ball bearings inside, which make them easier to move. So we have another tie this round. Toro has eight inch wheels in the front, and 10 inch wheels in the back. Honda, as measured, has eight and three quarter inch wheels in all four corners. The Toro did feel easier to steer with its larger back wheels. Win for Toro. Height adjusters on these mowers are pretty much identical. Both mowers have them on every wheel. Honda can go lower though to three quarters of an inch and still go up to four inches, while the Toro can only go one to four. Win for Honda, but the Toro has something special. You can actually set the height adjusters past its lowest setting. If you bend that tab in a little bit, you can now take the wheel to four and one quarter inches. You can mow some seriously tall grass with that then. Win for Toro. Now let's have a look at the rear drag flaps on the backside of each mower. Toro elected to go with a plastic one and from what I experienced, it's a little longer and can get hung up underneath the deck. This can get kind of annoying to constantly be freeing up as you mow. Honda has gone with a tried and true soft rubber flap which moves easily as you make each of your passes. Honda ain't dragging this round, they're taking another win. Now which is more convenient? In order to shift from mulch to bag or bag to mulch, Toro sticks with their old school mulch plug designs. And while it's not hard to convert from mulching to bagging or vice versa, it's still another step. Honda has this all figured out with a simple clip deflector lever, which makes it easy to switch back and forth. And as a really nice touch, you can partially mulch and partially bag if the lawn is getting really long. Not many other mowers out there can do this. Huge win for Honda on this one. Now side discharging, Toro shoots it 
right out to the left. Honda dumps it right out in front of you, right onto your feet. Messy feet equals a win for Toro. But Toro makes you register your mower so you can get one of their side discharge chutes. Honda has it all here in one package. You simply move the clip deflector over to bag, it shoots it all right down to the bottom, and you're done. No need to add any additional shoots. Win for Honda. Now moving up to the handlebars, Toro gives you two adjustment settings. That's kind of lame. Honda for the win here, you get three. Next up, how do they drive? Toro sticks with their personal pace, push it down, and away you go. The faster you walk, the faster it goes. Quite possibly one of my biggest gripes with the Toro personal pace system is that the handlebar assembly is so unnecessarily large. I hit it along my fence and it makes turning quite cumbersome. Honda has a select drive and you can adjust it to make your thumbs more comfortable. Because Honda brings this up and in a little bit, it makes it easier to make your turns. Honda for a huge win here. Now let's talk about bagging size. The Honda bag is just a little bit bigger. And another thing that I noticed is that the Honda slices up its clippings a little bit smaller, so it really allows you to pack that bag. Honda for another win. Deck suction. Deck suction. This was a difficult thing to judge as both mowers seemed to lift the grass blades up about the same. I would venture to say that both mowers did this equally well, especially when the bags were attached. Another tie. Next up, tall grass. Both handled tall grass well. My neighbor and I both mowed tall areas of grass earlier in the season. The grass was approximately 8 to 10 inches in length. I set the Toro up to the additional setting that I mentioned earlier and it left nothing behind. I'm going to attribute this to the added height as well as the amount of room underneath that deck to really mulch things up. His Honda did leave a few clippings left behind, but even this wasn't that much considering how tall the grass was. Toro takes this round. Cut quality, which one did it better? Well, the Toro has a recycler blade and kickers to re-divert the clippings back into the blade to be mulched up and put back into your lawn. The Honda has a dual blade design. I looked at this one critically and both mowers delivered a very clean cut while following the one-third rule. In mulch mode, the Honda left a slightly cleaner cut. Toro, Honda. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick this up, but it looks like I can see the Honda lines a lot more defined on this side versus the Toro here on this side. Everything seems to be a little bit of a crisper cut here on this side. The cleanest cut came while using the bag on each and it appeared to be a dead on tie. Honda is gonna take the win here for the cleanest cut on mulch mode. To wrap this all up, striping without a striper kit, who did it better? Toro still has to figure out that plastic drag flap on the back. After mowing multiple times with the Super Recycler, I never really saw any well-defined stripes. The rubber flap on the back, along with the clean cut of the Honda, helped solidify the wind for the better stripes right out of the box. It was a little difficult to tell with the angle of the sun, but from my view behind the mowers, Honda had the better dark and light stripes. Honda, way to go! Looks like Honda took the win here. So which mower is best for you? You'll have to decide which features fit you and your lawn best. As for me, I like the Toro. It has its pluses but I would go with the Honda for its engine quality, longevity, and its simple, efficient designs. Buyer beware though, Honda is getting out of the lawnmower game as of September 2023. Now you might be wondering, should I still buy a Honda? If you're interested in going that route, I would say get them while you still can. I believe that parts will be available for a while. Check this out, aren't I a nice neighbor? I'm gonna return this baby back to the neighbor with all this pollen all over the deck. Ha! If you want some more information on each of these mowers, I'll have those videos linked down below in the description. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.